Hi guys, I hope you are all doing great. This is the third video of our ACD course on competitive programming and this would be the last video of maths. So in this video, we'll be discussing factorials, permutations and combinations. What I'll try to do is I'll try to club each of these topics or I'll try to maintain some relation in each of these topics so that you understand each of these things well. Also guys, I got uh, advice that my screen size was a bit small. Not the screen size, but the text size was a bit small. That was primarily help, uh, happening because I actually use a 32 inch screen so as to, uh, in order to record these videos and probably you would be having a smaller device. So that's why it was happening, but I've tried increasing the uh, screen size now. So do let me know if th this works or if you need uh, even a bigger font so we can even do that. Cool. So let's get right into the topic. So the very first thing is what is factorial. I'm pretty sure that most of you would have studied this, uh, these things in your high school mathematics, but it's always good to have an overview. So let's start with factorials. So the factorial of any number is the multiplication of all the numbers from one to itself. For example, factorial of four, of four would be one into two into three into four. That would be six into four is 24. Similarly, factorial of five would be one into two into three into four into five. Or to generalize, you can say x factorial is equal to x into x minus one into x minus two into x minus three, so on to one. So this is the basic definition of x factorial or this is the basic de uh, definition of factorials. Now, where can we use them? So let's say I ask you that in how many ways can you arrange three given numbers? So let's say I just give you three uh, alphabets for that matter, A, B and C. I ask, uh, ask you that in how many ways can you arrange them? So you can say that, okay, one arrangement would be ABC, the other would be ACB, then BAZ, then BCA, then CAB, then CBA. So in total, it has six arrangements. But how do we uh, how did we come up with this number? So this was just an observation from our side. But in other words, we could have said that, okay, for the first letter that we are going to choose, we have three options, right? So we can choose from A or, for, or from B or from C. So we'll say that uh, we have three ways to choose the first character. Then since one of the characters would have gone, so for the sec second place, we'll only have two choices. And for the third place, we'll only have one choice. And then we'll obviously multiply these and we'll get six as the answer. Or in order to generalize, we can say that, okay, we have n factorial choices because for the first character, we'll have n choices. For the second, we'll have n minus one. For the third, we'll have n minus two. So on and so forth, right? Thereby, given a set of n elements, if you just want to arrange it, there are n factorial ways of doing it. I hope this makes sense and this is the pretty basic stuff. Now comes the point, what are permutations? So what could happen is that I'll say that, okay, I'm giving you a set of five elements. So maybe the five elements are one, two, three, four, five. But out of them, you just have to choose maybe like three elements. So how would you do that? So you'll say, okay, the uh, one of the ways could be that for the first element, I'll definitely be having five choices, right? For the second element, I'll again have four choices. For the third element, I'll have three choices. So yeah, this would be my answer because you are supposed to choose three elements from a set of five elements. But is there a way to generalize it? Yes, you can definitely say that the answer is going to be n into n minus one into n minus two. So on to n minus r plus one. But wait, what's r over here? So n is the number of uh, number of elements you are having. And r is the number of elements you want to select. But why is it n minus r plus one and not n minus r? Uh, so sim uh, simply I can say that, okay, if we want to select uh, three elements from a set of five, so let's like it five, five, three. Okay. So we were doing five into four into three, right? So this was n, this is n minus one. This is n minus two, right? So essentially we'll do a minus two over here or we'll do a minus r plus one over here. Because the very first quantity doesn't have a minus attached to it. Thereby, this formula makes sense. And this is perfectly valid. So you can call this permutations. Or this is the number of permutations. But is there a better way to write it? There definitely is. So let's write it in that format. So we can say it's equal to n into n minus 1 up to so on to n minus r plus 1. But what we'll do now is, we'll say that, okay, we are fine with multiplying and dividing this particular equation by some numbers. 
So I'll say, okay, let's multiply and divide it by all the numbers from this particular value till one. So the next term would be n minus r. After that, there would be n minus r minus one into so on to one. And we'll also have to divide by the same. So let's just assume we divide it also by the same. Now, if we look at it, so this entire term, this can be written as n factorial, right? And this entire term that would be in the denominator, just write, let's just write it. This is n minus r into n minus r minus one into so on to one, right? This entire term is simply n minus r factorial. So we got this formula from here and that's the formula for permutations. I hope this makes sense to you guys. And the last remaining thing is combinations. So let's just have a look at uh, that as well. And after that, we can go through the code. So for combinations, what happens is that we'll say that, okay, you have to select five elements or you have to select, uh, select like three elements from five elements, exactly what we were doing over here. But now the catch is that the way you arrange those three elements doesn't matter. So for example, if I say that you have to select two elements from three, uh, three elements, A, B, C, so you could have in permutations, you could have said that one of the ways AB, the other way is maybe like AC or then BA, then CA, then AC. Oh, sorry. AC is already done. Give me a second, but there have to be three ways. Yeah. The other is CB and then there's a BC. So these are the three ways or these are six ways of selecting the, uh, selecting permutations of size two from the set of size three, right? And you can validate it. Basically the your answer should have been. So NPR is N factorial by N minus R factorial, right? So N over here is three. So three into two divided by three, mi three minus two factorial. That is three into two divided by one. That is six. So yeah, we are getting six elements. Sorry, we are getting six elements. All right. So with that, if I ask you that in how many ways can you select the elements such that their ordering doesn't matter. So if you look over here, then this, and this are essentially the same, like they have the same elements, only the ordering is different, right? Also these, this and this also have the same elements, just the ordering is different. Similarly for this and this as well. So in totality, there are three different ways of selecting it if the ordering doesn't matter. And that's exactly what combinations mean. So what we need to do over here is, since in, uh, in the formula for uh, NPR or in the formula for permutations, we were calculating the orders and that was also mat mattering. So we'll just divide it by the number of uh, orders, right? So how we'll do that? So first thing we learned is that the number of ways to rearrange a thing is actually the factorial of it, right? So essentially when you are selecting R elements from N elements, then in this, there are R factorial ways of arranging those R elements. So we'll just divide this particular quantity by the total number of permutations. So the total number of permutations over here was n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. The number of ways to arrange these r elements are r factorial itself. So let's write it over here. And yeah, that becomes the formula for combinations. So we discussed basically three things. First one, uh, first one was factorial. That is simply x factorial. Then the second one was uh, permutations. Let's write it as NPR. So basically from a set of n elements, you want to select r elements and the formula for it is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. And the third one being combinations. That is ncr and the formula would be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. That is same as permutations. Also, we'll have to divide it by r factorial now. Yeah. So these are the three basic stuff that you need to know. Also, one thing all you'll observe over here is that these values can actually be insanely large, right? So what generally would happen is that you'll have to use mod a modulo arithmetics. So if you haven't watched the previous video, you'll have to watch that in order to understand modulo arithmetics because you are going to take mods over here. And since the denom uh, once you're taking mods, then you cannot do a simple arithmetic division. So you will be supposed, uh, you'll be doing a modulo inverse multiplication over here. So yeah, the previous video would definitely be helpful. So with that, let's look at the codes. Even in the previous video, we talked about snippets. And obviously I have a lot of snippets for maths itself because these things that is permutations, combinations are used a lot, not necessarily permutations, but yeah, combinations are actually used a lot in CP. So let's look at the snippets I already have. Let's use math snip. So yeah, I do have a function called NCR. 
okay let's just define the thing it wants so the first is const int that is one in nine plus seven and the other is u int that is long long unsigned long long okay over here let's look at the fact how it's calculating ncr so for, firstly what it's doing is it's saving the values of different factorials because at the end of the day uh, combinations is just multiplication and division of some factorials right which we studied right over here so we already have studied that these are essentially multiplication so for example multiplication is happening over here and division is happening over here so you are you are just going to deal with factorials so we'll save all the factorials so that we don't need to compute it over and over again and once we have saved all the factorials after that we are going to say that ncr is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial so let's see how we are going going to do that so firstly this is n factorial now we need to divide it by r factorial but we can't do that right because it's a uh, modular arithmetics and you'll have to multiply it by the modulo inverse of r rather than directly dividing it by r so over here we are going to say let's multiply it by modulo inverse of r and also let's multiply it by modulo inverse of n minus r the rest of the code snippets that is the mod inverse function or even the power function this was already discussed in the previous videos so i don't think that needs explanation but yeah let's check out the results for some values and also over here as explained in the previous video we are using int and they might overflow so let's just define int and as long long okay not log in but long long and this would then give errors so let's make it int 32 cool so let's define some number so what we'll do is we'll initially take a value from the user so let's say x we'll take it from the user and then we are gonna say what ncr is so ncr ncr of x comma r or let's just say ncr of n comma r and let's change the variables so this is n and the other is r and then it's a x and the other is r now let's try to see what is ncr 3 comma 1 so essentially from three elements we want to choose one element and let's see the value okay so i have not defined n let's do that okay so the value is 3 so from three elements in how many ways can you select one element obviously you can just select any of those elements so the number of ways is three but if i say 3c2 then also the number of ways is essentially gonna be three only but now let's change the quantities so what if i have four elements and from that i want to select two so the value is six let's just verify this so 4c2 would essentially be four factorial divided by two factorial divided by two factorial which is gonna be four into three divided by, divided by 2 that is 2 into 3 that is 6 itself you can test it for bigger values but make sure whenever you're gonna test this for some insanely large values then obviously the mod would start playing role over here and the value that you might calculate on the paper would not uh, be the same because essentially these are they are gonna do mods over here and when you are calculating on a paper i'm not really sure if you're gonna try doing mods over that itself right so let's try this we get a value and this hopefully would be correct because this is the code i've been using for a very long time and the formula also looks good but it's not you know easy to just verify this on paper because it's gonna take a very very long time to actually calculate this so definitely i'm not gonna do that but yeah cool Th that's pretty much it for the video and like always you'll find a lot of attached problems in the description section one thing i would like to mention over here is that cp is more about solving problems rather than just knowing the concepts in DSA, it might make sense that you just go through the standard algorithms and you could be good with it. But in CP, it's more about understanding where, what, which concept could be applied. And hence, I'm really emphasizing on how to practice the problems and I'm giving a lot of problems to practice. I hope this is actually helping you guys out and you are trying to solve the problems. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to solve all the problems that I men mentioned in the docs. Some of the problems are hard. I know that. And you're expected to at least try them. And once you are not able to solve them, then feel free to uh, either ask the uh, doubts on my Discord server or you could Google the things up or even go for editorials or video editorials, whatever you like. But yeah, practicing those things is at most important. If you just see these videos and you don't practice those concepts, then it's not going to help you out. 
cool yeah that's pretty much it for the video and like before i would just request you to either like or dislike the video depending on if you find this content useful until next time bye bye